Let me tell the story. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God created all that there was, all that there ever will be. He breathed life into man. He created man. And man had the ultimate choice to follow God or to choose not to follow God. And sin found its way into the world by the choices of humanity. And Easter is a celebration of what God did to remedy sin in mankind. See, Easter is not about celebrating the cross. It's not celebrating the blood. Easter is about celebrating God's victory over sin, God's victory over death, God's victory over, over Satan, over evil. And so Easter is a celebration. We need to go praise God. Say it again. Praise God. See, we need to be praising God because Easter is a celebration. I want to give you five reasons to celebrate. And we're going to do it one step at a time. There's going to be scripture. There's going to be songs. And then I'm going to just talk a little bit about what that scripture means. But let me just tell you from the very beginning that God loves you. God loves you so much that we get to celebrate Easter because if we didn't get to celebrate Easter, then we'd have no hope. So you've got to slip in your bulletin, a sheet, and there's five things, five reasons for an Easter celebration. The first one is this. We celebrate Easter because Jesus was willing to pay the price God the Father demanded in order for man, for you and I, to be in the right relationship with him. Easter is about God's forgiveness of our sin, and he carried the weight of the world with him. He took the sin of humanity the hold of Satan, the bonds and the consequences of being separated with him. He took all that with him to the cross. And when these girls are sitting here, we have five girls, six girls that, that are, are, are bound by sin. Jesus broke those bonds of sin. If you have a Bible, if you would turn to um, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, because Jesus has been taken down from the cross. His followers are mourning. They're basically going, God, what on earth has happened? We followed Jesus and he's dead. What are we supposed to do now? Can you see the dilemma that Matthew and, and Mark and, and, and Barnabas and, and Peter and John, did, did, can you imagine the, the dilemma Jesus had called them as they were fishing on, on the, the Sea of Galilee, and he said, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And three and a half years later, Jesus is laying in a tomb, having died on a cross. And the world is celebrating because they all think Jesus is a, is a liar. They think he's a lunatic because he did the one thing that he said he wouldn't do. And that would be give up hope. And for three solid days, the world was without hope. In their own minds. Let me begin in verse 1 of John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, that could be today. Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter. And to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple went forth, and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. And so Simon Peter came also, following him, and entered the tomb and saw that the linen wrappings were lying there, and the face cloth which had been put on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had first come to the tomb then also entered and saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand that he must rise again from the dead. See, there was a misunderstanding 
We all like things to fit in an orderly fashion that makes sense in our minds. And, and God rarely does what we want Him to do in the way that we want Him to do, but He always does what He says He's going to do. We celebrate Easter not only because He was willing to pay the price, but, could, but He not only paid the price with His life, but He didn't stay dead. Jesus didn't stay dead. Praise God! Because if Jesus would have stayed dead, we might as well go home and have breakfast. Seriously, if Jesus had not defeated death, had not defeated Satan, had not defeated evil, had not fulfilled the, the plan of, of the Father, the plan of, of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then we'd be wasting our time. This would just be religion. But this is not a religion. This is about a relationship with Jesus Christ. When Jesus walked out of that tomb, he walked out with the sin of mankind having been taken care of. He paid the price for you. He paid the price for me. He paid the price for our doubts, for our fears, for our shortcomings, for our faux pas, for our sin, for our foolishness, for all that we are. Jesus said, I paid it all for you. And he made a way for us to have a relationship with him. But there's something we have to understand and we have to grasp, that Jesus is God. He is God the Son and he, he came down in the flesh for you and for me. And that's what those... Days prior, Good Friday, Maundy Tuesday, sleep in Saturday, and then you come to the celebration Sunday to where he's no longer dead. He's no longer in the tomb. The last scripture I read said, they didn't yet understand that he must rise again. We must understand and we must believe that Jesus rose from the grave a tomb and a stone that was rolled away, and Jesus is the victor. Will you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that we would see in you, see in Christ, possibility, potential, a way of doing our existence and a way of doing our life that isn't dependent on our abilities and what we're capable of doing, but on your mercy and on your grace, knowing that you have made us in your likeness. You've given us a heart to receive you and that we have the opportunity, God, to live a life that has purpose and meaning. So, God, I pray that we would recognize you as who you are, the God of all things. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, we have the privilege of, of knowing Jesus in a post-Testament world. We can read about Timothy and Paul and Silas and, and John and James and, and all of those that followed Jesus during Scripture time. Paul and Peter and John and James didn't have John, Paul, Peter, and James to look at in the past in view. So we have scripture where we get to see how God dealt with those as he walked the earth and then after he, he ascended into heaven. But you know, God gave us something too. He gave us the George Truitts of the world, the Billy Grahams of the world, the Jack Grahams, the Francis Chans, the Lottie Moon, the Annie Armstrong, Hudson Taylor. You know, you might not know a lot of those names. You can read about them. Faithful people in, in, in generations past that aren't included in this book, but might have lived 50 years ago or might have just died three or four weeks ago. Or you can look at a Lanny Johnson or a Bob Adams or a Robin Stepanek or a Lyle Vandover or, or a Corey Deering or a Marilyn Johnson or a Lisa Trottier or a Trevor Daggers. Someone that is in this very room right now and you can see God working in their lives as they flesh out what it means to believe and to understand that he is God and that he defeated death and he defeated Satan. And that they truly believe, like I believe, that Christ in me is my hope of glory. Christ in you is your hope of glory. He says, believe in me and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Scripture continues in John chapter 20 and verse 10. John writes, so the disciples went away again to their own homes, but Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. And so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting 
One at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been laying. And they said to her, and this, this is really cool, why are you weeping? Why aren't you celebrating? Why are you weeping? Because like I said before, she had this false belief that it was done, that it was over. That life as she knew it was done. And so the angels announced to this prostitute, former prostitute, Mary Magdalene, she said, why are you, what? They said, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they've taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have lain him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. So the angels just announced, <laughs> you don't got to cry. You need to be celebrating. You might not have all the answers, but you don't need all the answers. Mary Magdalene, no matter what your past, no matter who you've been with, no matter what you've done, Jesus is the answer for that. It's empty because he's not there. Nobody laid his body anywhere. He's alive. But she hadn't quite yet recognized that. But she was going to very quickly understand that he really was the Lord of all, that he was the maker of all things, and in him was life. Amen. Lord of all. We celebrate Easter because he is Lord of all. And no matter what you're going through, no matter who you are, no matter what you've been through, he is the answer. He's got the answer to all of life's questions. As a matter of fact, we just read, I just read to you that, that they came to the tomb and Mary Magdalene saw the angels and Jesus appeared and she's got no clue who he is and this is what happens next. Jesus said to her, Woman, or Mary, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God. So Mary Magdalene came, announcing to the disciples, to the closest of Jesus' followers, and said to them, I have seen the Lord, and that he said these things to her, that I am God, that I am the Lord. We celebrate Easter because when you seek him, you find him. He's there to be found. We might, not, we might not understand, we might not grasp it, we might not get it, but he wants us to know that he will help us understand, that he offers what we call faith. He says, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. How awesome is that? Are you tired this morning? Man, are you worn out? How many of you have been up since 4.30? Couple, couple. Eh, nah, not quite. Easter is God's proclamation of freedom to those who will believe. Doesn't matter what your past, doesn't matter what your present, doesn't matter what your future, what matters is what you do with Jesus. Because your future hinges on what you do with Jesus. Your present hinges on what you do with Jesus. Your past hinges on what you do with Jesus. Because Jesus says, if you will believe in me and trust in me as, as your Savior, then I will wipe away your sin. I will forgive you of your sin because that's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why he, he rose from the, from the dead, why he rose from the grave. That's why that stone rolled away from that tomb who was so that Jesus could walk out, not in a stretcher, but on his own two feet and go, victory, victory in God. I've defeated all that hinders you from life. How cool is that? We need to celebrate. See, Jesus did this for you because he loves you. He did this for me. See, I know me. I know me. But God knows me so much better than I know me. He knows the whys and the what-fors 
and the reasons why I do what I do. And you know what he says? Come here. Come on. Just follow me. We'll, we'll work all of that out. I don't want you to stop being you, Ray, but I want you to start being you in me and let me make you into the person that you want to be. See, he did it for you. We celebrate Easter because when we seek him, we find him. When we seek God, we find God. What an incredible proposition, God says. If you, if, if you look for me, I'm behind the door. I'm behind door number one, I'm behind door number two, I'm behind door number three. You'll never lose. So he sent Mary to tell the disciples, he's alive. He's alive. And next we find them in a precarious place. Let me read this to you. Verse 19, on the evening of that first day of the week, that's the same day, when the, the, the disciples were together and the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after this, and after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. See, when you seek him, you find him. And you find all that God has for you. He doesn't give you bits and pieces of himself. He says, man, if you surrender yourself to me, that's what the Easter is all about. It's about me, me Jesus says, making it possible for you with one act of of contrition, one acknowledgement, one reception of Jesus as your Lord and your life changes forever. See, he doesn't just forgive your sin, past, present, and future, but he says, I'm going to be with you to the end of the world. I'm going to leave you the comfort. I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. And if you're a believer this morning and you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have God in you and he truly is your hope of glory. He offers new life. He offers potential. He offers purpose. He gives you every reason to want to wake up in the morning, even when you don't feel like you want to wake up in the morning, whether you got up at 4.30 or whether you're going to sleep till noon tomorrow. Who's going to sleep till noon tomorrow? One person, Catherine, because she works graveyards. <laughs> God, God's going to bless her whether she gets up at noon or she sleeps all day and takes a Catherine day. Man, aren't, aren't there days when you just want to just lay in bed and go and spend all day in bed just, just recovering, recouping? See, God says, all things are possible with me. It doesn't matter if you're discouraged, if you're depressed, if you're excited, if you're jubilant. All things are possible. He says, I will give you life and give it to you in abundance. And so we're going to close this chapter, this passage, with the reality that Jesus, when he breathed on them, signified their step into new life, living by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. As believers, that's what we've received as well. And if you're not a believer this morning and you receive Christ as the Lord, then just know that you get all of God, all the potential, all the hope, all the purpose he says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Man, I'll always be there for you. I'll be your assurance. And when you get up, whether it's noon, whether it's 4.30, every day can be a new day because you have a new life in Jesus. That's what he offers he offers you a new day, a new life. He says, come to me, and I'll receive you. For a long time. Stand with me, if you will. We're going to get to have the privilege this morning of experiencing 
watching a young lady who has surrendered her life to the Lord follow through in believer's baptism, Aspen Marie Stepanek. She's just a little girl, but she knows that Jesus lives. She knows that Jesus died for her. We're going to play just a song. I'm going to ask you just to, just to be quiet, just listen. Dan is going to come stand up here. I need to go get changed real quick. But Dan is going to say, if you need someone to pray for you, let Dan pray for you. And if we need to extend this, we'll extend this. And I'll be here after the service if you'd like to talk. But would you just kind of stretch and listen and pray? Pray for the person around you. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. <laughs>